Well, one or two of these lads here were expecting to see me head that ball. Much to their surprise, see me with this baseball bat in my hand, I can assure them that I'm well acquainted with the game. Some 20 years ago at Radnor Road Junior School, I was introduced to it. Sport was always high on the list of my priorities, and uh, in those days I played against the likes of Terry Yorath and Bob Delgado, both of whom are professional footballers like myself. Anyway, we're all here today to watch the match. It's a lovely day, and uh, without any more ado, we'll hand you over to our match commentator, Les Smith. For England, Joey Hyam, opening bat. Bobby Davin, first baseman. Alan Williams, a hard-hitting batsman. Harry Turner, backstop and captain today. Neil Rice, another good batsman and a deputy backstop. Tony Duffy earns his first cap today. John Halliday, player of the match last year. Teddy McLean, daddy of the team at 38. John Rice wins his first cap at 37, brother of Neil. Jeff Lynch, opening fast bowler. And at 11, Graham Constantine, medium pace bowler, a late change. Substitute Michael McLean, a brother of Terry McLean. This making two sets of brothers in the English squad. A sound team, but much depends on Graham Constantine's bowling in place of key man Freddie Price, who has failed a fitness test this morning. Wales showing four changes from 1976. Half John Roberts, captain today, scored a lot of runs for Wales. Derek Tuza, first cap on one base. Steve Haynes, another good all-rounder. Ivor Hughes, backstop and a stylish batsman. Paul Cross, a left-hander. John Smith, opening bowler and a good bat. Stephen Granger, first cap today. Tony Parry, another left-hander, had an outstanding game here in 1975. Bernard Lear wins his first cap at 39. Bobby Bright, change bowler and a good batsman. Ken Bagshaw, his first Welsh appearance, a good all-rounder. And now substitute, Tony Murphy. As usual, the Welsh side looks full of runs and the English bowlers must attack from the first ball. If Wales are allowed to settle, we could be in for a feast of runs. The referee today is Colin Williams of the English Baseball Association, handling his first international. Colin apparently is very severe on players' descent. Could be very interesting afternoon, all things considered. And Wales have won the toss, and quite naturally, John Roberts has elected the bat and will face the bowling of opening bowler Jeff Lynch. Jeff had an excellent final trial and played himself right in the English side with his batting and his bowling. John Roberts to take first strike against Jeff Lynch. But a bad ball, and that was below the forward knee of the batsman. To be a good ball, the ball must be above the forward knee and below the chin and over the batting crease. Extra. That was an extra. The second bad ball constitutes a run to the batting side, but not to the man at the batting crease. It is essential that bowlers keep extras down to the very, very minimum, as an extra can constitute a winning run. Jeff Lynch, bowling to John Roberts. One bad. Another bad ball. Jeff Lynch, uh, his four international caps for England. A very classical action. A very good ballroom dancer. Perhaps that's where he gets his balance from. John Roberts, 37 of A's, opening for Wales. And he takes it, he plays it low down to into the leg. Very safe. One run. One run to John Roberts. The first run for Wales in this, the 1977 Jubilee International. Stephen Haynes of the Land Romney Club in Cardiff. Captain of his club. Earning his sixth cap today. Very knowledgeable player. Very determined batsman. A good fielder. Facing the bowling of Jeff Lynch. Opening bowler for England. And he is out. He has taken his first ball and he is struck. Now, if the batsman makes a shot and is struck on the body, other than the, the arm up to the uh, elbow, he is out. And Stephen Haynes, a very disappointing start. Out without scoring. John Smith to face the bowling of Jeff Lynch. John Smith, 25 years of age, a dock worker. He's asking, Jeff Lynch is asking, and the referee has given it just above the knee, over the middle peg. A very good decision. Jeff Lynch very pleased with that. John Smith strikes but misses, and he's based. He's based. John Smith seems to hesitate. He took the ball, thinking it was probably his second good. He missed the ball, fumbled, but recovered by backstop. And it was thrown in, and he was based out. John Smith based out on one base. A bad start for John Smith. And the score, Wales six for two men out. Not a good start.
very confident first stroke for his country by Bernard Leo. The first man to get past one, he's gone to two, he's gone to three, and in his first stroke for Wales, Bernard Leo. Very popular, Pennyland captain gets four well-deserved runs. And Bernard, who is very uptight on big occasions, despite experience, will be delighted with that four runs, his first for Wales. Jeff Lynch ball into Ken Bagshaw. Out! And two goods and out. No argument. He was, I think, he throws. Ken Bagshaw throws in his first international. Two very good deliveries. The second good was a particularly good one and made for Kenny Bagshaw. He didn't take it. And unless a batsman takes the one of two good balls, he is dismissed from the game, at least from the innings. Derek Tuza to face the bowling of Jeff Lynch. And out. tried to touch it away and obstruct the backstop, but it's, he's out. Well taken by uh, Harry Turner because his view must have been obstructed from the action, a fair action by Derek Tuza. He didn't lose sight of the ball, he took it cleanly, and Derek Tuza is out after scoring one in his first knock. <laughs> Ivor Hughes to face Jeff Lynch. One Very back. wide ball, low and wide. And it's a good delivery, but not, not connected. It was hit straight back to Jefferson in the bowling box, so a swift return to Bobby Davin on one base, and Ivor Hughes is on his way back. Also having scored one run. 15 for five, Wales. This is a collapse by Welsh batting standards. Paul Cross taking his time, not yet towing the pegs as he must before the bowler can bowl. Jeff Lynch bowls to left-hander Paul Cross, who takes it. It's a bad one. Oh, David moved swiftly two yards inside the diamond, gathered the ball and got back and based out Paul Cross. And that is one man that England are very glad to see the back of. Left-hander Paul Cross, who uh, looked if he could cause trouble. And that is a hat-trick for Jeff Lynch. Wales, 18 for six. And Bernard Leo. Four runs in his first knock for Wales in the first round. Taking his time, not yet towing the pegs, so Jeffy Lynch can't bowl. Now he tows the pegs, and Jeff Lynch prepares to bowl to Bernard Leo. And it's a good one, and it's a good, confident punch down through the diamond. They don't catch that type of shot. And Bernard Leo gets a confident two runs for Wales. Two Bernard runs. Leo made a very confident start for Wales indeed. <laughs> Left-hander Bobby Bright. Awaiting the delivery from Jeff Lynch. Already with a hat-trick to his credit. One bad! It was a bad ball. Bobby Bright took evasive action, went behind his neck, through his ear. Jeff Lynch doesn't mind. Extra! Another extra for Wales. And how they need these extras. Because runs are not coming all that easy. Bobby Bright. Wales facing Jeff Lynch of England. One bad! And although he ducked down, the referee Williams thought the ball was still above the chin and didn't give a good. Bobby Bright, very confident, waiting for the ball that he wants from Jeff Lynch. Oh, and that wasn't the ball. Out. Clean balled. Although he made progress, the ball was thrown to the baseman and he is based out. John Roberts, very patient. Waits to see if there are any extras coming from the English bowler Lynch. Oh, and John Out. took a very bad ball. It would appear that Lynch has got this, these Welsh bats are absolutely petrified. Some of them are playing strokes that I've never seen them played before, and certainly John Roberts has never played a stroke like that. Wales, 22 for 8, and I have a job to believe it myself. 22 for 8. What a tremendous success that uh, Jeff Lynch is having in the bowling box. He's certainly going to give the English batsman a chance when it's their turn to play for such a low score at the moment but anything can happen the Stephen Granger faces the bowling and he cracks it and it's beautifully stopped by Lynch Lynch is a sensation in the uh, in the bowling box 
a tremendous hit by Granger and it was hit hard and slightly wide of Lynch. He stepped one yard, took it and a quick throw to one. Wales 22 for nine. England that must be uh, shaking their heads in disbelief. This is a very, very low score for Wales. Very low score. Perhaps Tony Parry can uh, put matters to right. One of the lowest Welsh scores was uh, 19 runs at Cardiff in 1962. 19. Uh, they still won the game. That was another low ball, identical, and they're all out. Yes, a tremendous oh, achievement. Yes. Tony Parry hit the ball straight back at the bowler, who quick thinking didn't worry about the base runner, threw the ball into the backstop, and Wales were all out when the ball was put in the diamond before Bernard Lear could get there. A tremendous performance by Jeff Lynch. He's really got the English tails up. And Wales now face uh, an uphill task to get the Englishman back on the bench as quickly as possible. Uh, it's a good delivery and it's a good stroke. And Joy Hyam, and it's misfielded by Tony Parry. Could it be possible to, but it's a safe one. Well done! <coughs> it went into sleep. Tony Parry, unusual for Tony, misfielded, but he uh, redeemed with a good throw and kept Joy Hyam down to one run because base two was occupied by baseman Bright. One run to England. Bobby Davin, number two for England, facing a delivery from John Smith. One That's a very good ball, just inside and above the peg. Bobby Davin, three times captain of England. Didn't want to know it. Confidently faces the bowling of John Smith. Takes a nice hour one, but it's well picked up by Johnny Roberts. Ouch. And he's out. A good pickup by John Roberts. Not a great throw. It was wide of the base. But Derek Tooza playing in his first game for Wales on the base. Picked it up. Leaned sideways. And that's a good man gone. Bobby Davin is gone without having scored. Alan Williams, left-hander. Comes in at number three for England. Facing John Smith. And oh, he just hung his bat out to dry, Alan. Out. That was not the stroke of Alan Williams normally, and he's out without scoring. Good delivery, but uh, a bad stroke by Alan Williams. Harry Turner, 30 years of age, seven caps. Oh, and that's off the edge, and he's out. caught behind. It caught, went off the edge, a thin edge, and Paul Cross at Longstop, very nicely placed, st stepped to his right and took a, a very comfortable catch. The opening Welsh bowler bowls to John Rice and it's close into the body but it's a beautiful punch round the leg. Met it with the meat of the bat. It's fielded by Bagshaw who's throwing in. It's a very good throw. And there's an appeal. Three runs and out. Two runs and out. He has given it a tremendous throw by Kenny Bagshaw. Well collected by Bernard Leo. Treme a tremendous throw by Bagshaw. Well collected by Leo and the base runner is given out. He had to force the pace with the few men home uh, and it was a very a good decision by referee Williams. England 16 for 8 and Rice feeling no doubt very upset at the uh, method of his dismissal which was all part of baseball. Graham Constantine at the batting crease again facing John Smith. Beautiful ball, it's a beautiful punch, it's up in the air and Bernard Leo is going for it. And Bernard Leo took it well, running from his base along the diamond, took a very good catch to Dismith, Graham Constantine. And Wales are truly back in this game again. England 16 for 10. Last man at the pegs, Teddy McLean. It's a good ball, but he's put it up in the air. John Smith himself is running and John Smith ran over 30 yards to take a very good catch to put England all out and the ball is put in the batting crease and England are all out. Well, certainly no shortage of excitement at the end of the first innings. Uh, with me now is England captain Harry Turner. Harry, you must have been well pleased dismissing Wales for 23, eh? Yeah, I, th I thought we'd done well getting them out for 23, but we failed ourselves. But if we'd have got them out for 90, we'd have made 85. I'd have been well pleased, you know, uh, just had to fight back from that. A good performance from Jeff Lynch in particular. I believe this is bowled the first time well. he's opened the ball in. No, he's bowled, he's opened before, you know, he's bowled very well. 
first innings. Moving over to Welsh captain John, John Roberts, a disappointing start for you, but uh, turning around then and dismissing England for 15. Oh, the boys fielded magnificently. Great, very, very pleased with them. And a good piece of bowling as well from um, John Smith. John Smith. Oh, he bowled great, terrific. On so top of the wall now. Any forecast then? That's a one innings game now, isn't it? Uh, oh, we want a 10 now, we'll have a 10. Still oh. Wales to win, John. Oh, we'll have a 10. So. We'll get a 10 now, that'll do us. OK, we look forward to the second innings. England. At the halfway stage then, Wales 23 runs in their first innings, to which England replied with 16. Some great bowling performances for Jeff Lynch for England and John Smith of Wales. Jeff Lynch will open the bowling for England once again after his great triumph in the first. Bowling to John Roberts. And that was a bad ball. Can Jeff Lynch repeat his performance of the first innings? Bowling to John Roberts, who takes a very high ball and very lucky to get away with it. Not a very safe, confident shot at all from John Roberts, but he makes one run. Jeff Lynch bowling to Derek Tuza. It's a better ball, and oh, what a brilliant shot, and what a brilliant catch. Very fast cut into the slip, and Terry McLean strapped because of first uh, uh, innings injury when he was running for four, took a brilliant catch almost nonchalantly. And Terry will be pleased with that one. Four runs against Wales, and the catch can be bad. Paul Cross facing a delivery from Jeff Lynch, and he takes it, confidently plays it wide in the slip field it goes through the crowd as Paul Cross on his way from two to three is he going to fall no the prompter John Roberts and captain has held him up on three base the prompter is there in the special box provided on the pitch between three and four to advise the running baseman exactly how far they may progress or otherwise a prompter is worth a lot of runs to his side in many in many ways John Smith, batting number six for Wales, didn't score in the first innings, will be wanting to get some runs, and he's struck, I thought it hit, and he's out, and John Smith, bowling saviour for Wales, has made two ducks, and John Smith won't like that, John is a very um, keen batsman and measures his success in the bowling box with the runs that he's in credit and I'm afraid John has had two ducks and not too happy. So Nupari tells the pegs to face a delivery from Jeff Lynch. And he watched it but oh and it's dropped by Terry McLean and one wonders whether that uh, injury to the hamstring is making it impossible for Terry McLean to move as quickly as he normally can. His right hamstring is heavily strapped and he's obviously in some discomfort but there was a chance he got both hands for the ball but Tony Parry is on two runs and said thank you very much Bernard Leo facing England's opening bowler and he watches it and he hits it up in the air but this time he's caught brilliantly by Alan Williams who ran around from a very deep leg position into fine leg and took a very very excellent running catch and that was Duffy and not Teddy McLean a lovely running catch by Tony Duffy Bobby Bright facing the bowling of Jeffrey Lynch. It's it very high wide of uh, three base through the diamond. Bobby Bright has got the two. He's going for three and his prompt has called him home. And it's four very good runs for Bobby Bright. Bobby Bright, who although well down in the batting order, is uh, more than an average batsman. Wales 20 for four and improvement on their first innings. One bad. Captain John Roberts at the batting crease facing the bowling of the English opener, Jeff Lynch. Perfect classical action right through. Ah, Bad ball high, he's asking, but uh, it went uh, a bit high over the, over the top peg, but well over the chin. John only has a small chin. Ah, and he's tempted. I would have touched him, but... Uh, it's a good ball given. John seemed to be caught in doubt. John Robert a little uncertain in some of his shots today. Facing Jeff Lynch. 
and he's pushed out and that's brilliantly taken in the field by Alan Williams Ivor Hughes fourth cap for Wales today backstop for the Land Romney Club in the Welsh National Baseball League Premier Division and Ivor took a very high ball I don't know what the hurry is the bus doesn't go until tomorrow they're rushing taking their first high ball and I don't know why Granger first cap today facing John Halliday and he decided he's going to have a dip regardless and it's through the crowd it's being chased as he goes to two Stephen Granger gets the three and he's going home the ball has yet not yet been Boys. found now that's an obstacle for you the ball under the car nobody's claiming lost ball it's four runs for Wales and the ball has been recovered game is poised now with Wales 47 for six and with their seven runs lead right on batsman Constantine will come into the box game Constantine a last minute replacement from the injured Fred Price out with a dislocated shoulder prepares to deliver to Bobby Bright left hander Bobby Bright one bad Bobby Bright, six extra. runs to his credit this innings. Gets another extra for Wales, but not for himself. As another bad ball is bowled by Graham Constantine. Graham Constantine bowls to Bobby Bright. Bad. Trying to bowl close into the chin, but going point, just outside. Graham Constantine, born into Bobby Bright. And that's a good ball down the middle, but it's well punched by Bobby Bright through the diamond not giving much opportunity to the English fielders and he makes two runs as the ball is returned two into Constantine who had gone to cover two base oh, yes. plenty of Welsh support here this afternoon uh, teams from Newport in the Gwent and the also from Cardiff have made the trip up and they are in splendid force this afternoon to uh, give vocal support to their side as Graham Constantine ball into Tony Parry and Tony Parry has caught this ball he did high it's cleared one base, chased by Bobby Davin. Tony Pye gets to two. He's making three. The ball, ball is misfielded, and Tony four Parry runs. is home for four runs, giving Wales a much a healthier look. Tony Parry has been a, a great performer on English grounds, only played in Welsh baseball wearing the spectacles, and uh, will have nothing at all to do with contact lenses, he tells me. Wales now recovering 63 for six and there is a ball in change I believe Jeff Lynch has come into the diamond he's got the ball he's going into the box ball in for his second spell in this innings against Bobby Bride who has lofted it up in the air wide of the English off field it's being chased by Joey Hyam as Bobby Bright gets three runs and he's going for four as the ball is returned into the diamond. And Bobby Bright is having a, a great afternoon with the bat. Having got 12 runs to date in this second innings. Stephen Haynes to face the delivery from Jeff Lynch. That's a good ball. It's poked up in the air, but I think he's gone. Yes, he's gone. Picked up by Tony Duffy in the outfield for England. And Stephen Haynes has gone. It don't think the shot went as strong as he wanted and he's got seven runs well picked up by Tony Duffy Wells 67 for seven well joining me now is George McElraith George has been an official of the English Baseball Association for some 20 years and is also vice president at Grange Albion in Cardiff George, I believe you played some soccer as well, didn't you? Yes, I played with Liverpool in the, in the 30s there when Scott was there and uh, Barmer and Fagan and Hanson and all that crowd was there. And uh, of course, I had to finish here with bad ankles. Same yeah. as you, John. <laughs> um, 
Now, I noticed in the programme here that the, the youth development is coming along a lot in the, in the baseball at Liverpool. I know at uh, Cardiff and South Wales we play from the age of seven and eight through school and then right through, you know, but I think that at the younger level in Liverpool it's not so prominent, is it? Well, that's quite not so prominent because of the schools, you see, but now we've got this youth uh, playing in the English baseball and they play on a Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. We've got six clubs now in it, which uh, another four is applied for next year and uh, we should have a good youth team coming along. But if they carry on with the way they're playing now because there's such good baseball as in it, I think Wales is going to be quivering in a couple of years' time. Looking at the two sides today, in, uh, in the field in particular, the English lads, without being unkind to them, look, look a little bit slower than, than the Welsh in the field. Are, are they much older than the Welsh side? Well, yes, they are, you see. In the Welsh side, they're bringing them up from very young and they're getting their international baseball pretty quick but here with the schools not coming out from the schools they're playing a bit older than they should be. Finally uh, George what about today's game? England started off well but Wales getting to grips with it a little bit now. Well it's 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 right there that England played very well in the first half and they, they done very well to get Wales away but as, as it's always known you always get a few stand in and make a, a stand of it with the Welsh team. Of uh, course, you can't give them a few chances and a few lives are being given and you don't get a you punish you for it. Right, OK, George, thanks very much. We'll sit back and watch the game and hand you over to our match commentator, Les Smith. Tony Parry to continue the Welsh second innings to face a delivery from Jeff Lynch with his score at 69 for 7. And this is a good fight back by Wales who at one time were 26 with six men gone. Jeff Flynn's dummies to ball. This is a feature and quality of English baseball. They do not man the bases and base runners can move with a certain amount of freedom. And Tony Parry has hit the ball up in the air. It's gone behind the backstop and it's a great effort by John Halliday. But unfortunately, he got his hands to it, but uh, he couldn't hold it. A very difficult catch. And with those two runs, Tony Parry has now scored 50 runs for Wales. <laughs> Tony Parry from the Gwent League. Bobby Bright facing a ball of Lynch. A very low delivery and a bad ball. Well below the knee and just outside the peg. Bobby Bright, left-hander from Gwent. And that was slightly wide, but he Ouch. took it. But uh, it was well caught by Neil Rice. The Lord took it off his ankles. Very agile boy. And he was immediately looking to see if he could uh, base out the baseman, the base runner on free Stephen Granger, who wisely had kept hold of his base. That was a good catch to dismiss Bobby Bright, who was made 12 in this uh, second innings for Wales. Wales 71 for 8, a, a reasonable score, a bit better than what perhaps was thought in view of their pathetic performance in the first innings when they scraped 23 runs. Paul Cross with the responsive known that he is the last man on the pegs with Tony Parry anchored on two and Stephen Granger on three. Paul Cross must try and get these people home. And he's all out, his ball. It's a lovely ball from Lynch, who has taken three men. A ball right across the centre pegs. The ball made for Paul Cross. He struck too soon. Well taken by the Welsh, the English backstop. And with the base runners stranded, Wales are all out. A very good ending by Jeff Lynch in his second innings. A very good performance. And a young spectator congratulating him. His son, I think. And very, very proud of his daddy must be. Wales, 23 in their first innings, making 71 in their second innings. And England having scored 16 in their first innings. England requiring 79 runs to win. I've got one run towards our total from Joey Hyam, taking his first ball from John Smith, just wide of the backstop. And it's a safe one run for Joey Hyam. This is a considerable total for England to get in view of their first innings performance and uh, it'll be a very interesting situation 
as John Smith prepares the ball to Bobby Davin. One bad. Bad ball going wide and Bobby Davin ignored it. England must play this steady with no rush of blood to the head as John Smith bowls. It was a high bar and it's gone wide and it's gone over the crowd. And Bobby Davin is running well and it's a four runs. Bobby Davin is going on for four runs. A very good four knock. Runs. Wide of one base. Went through the diamond and the English supporters gave him a very good reception for a very good knock. Bobby Davin so often the saver of the, uh, the English side both as a base man and as a run getter Tony Duffy his first game for England and his second innings has hit the ball through but it's well stopped out. by John Smith and Tony Duffy is out based having failed to score in the first innings has failed to score in this innings John Smith had a bit of trouble with his hand there in stopping that hard return but uh, he's a Cardiff docker and they don't bleed Terry McLean, hamstring muscle tightly strapped, facing John Smith, and Terry McLean really hits it through that boundary. Uh, he's having difficulty in running, but he's got the two base. He's not allowed a runner until a substitute has been used, and then a runner may be used. But the ball is out in the country. And a very good four runs from a very competent English batsman, Terry McLean. A good reply, England then, 13 for one. And that's another good clout by John Rice. But it's caught. Stephen Ames anticipating the type of shot. Ran wide round three and took a splendid catch. Jeff Lynch facing John Smith of Wales. John Smith balls and it's hit facing. Picked up by Bernard Leo, it's thrown in. And a great throw again by Bernard Leo and a great collection by Derek Tuza. And Jeff Lynch is out. And now we have a substitution. Michael McLean, brother of Terry, has come on in the place of the injured. Uh, Graham Constantine, rather unlucky for England, but um, at least they've benefited or should benefit by batting of Michael McLean. And so we have uh, two sets of brothers in the English squad battling away to get the 79 runs that England need to avoid defeat by Wales. And Michael did not add anything to the score, being clean balled by John Smith. Be very disappointed that Michael McLean so much was expected of him and that's another hat-trick for John Smith John Smith disappointed with the bat but very delighted with his bowling performance has taken out substitute Michael McLean left-hander Alan Williams with a Welsh name nine caps today facing John Smith and he catches it on the edge, but he catches it with the meat. Run with two, it's been chased by Bobby Bright. It's collected. Alan Williams is going for three, and he's going home as the ball is well put into the diamond. But a very good hit by Alan Williams when it was needed. A four good runs for Alan Williams and England. Now, this is an interesting situation which shows that England have read their rules well. A runner can only be brought on after a substitute has been used. A substitute is being used, or was used, but has been taken out of the game. And now the English team manager has brought on a runner with the permission of the uh, of Welsh captain, although he didn't really require it. And now Terry McLean will play the ball, but will not run. Tony Duffy uh, will run in his place, but the runs will be credited, if any, to Terry McLean. And Terry McLean does need a runner. Out. It's clean ball by John Smith. And so Tony Duffy had a little walk for nothing, but it did him good. Terry McLean not very happy about that. And uh, I don't think he's speaking Welsh at the moment. Outside the 
the diamond, please. Outside the diamond. Field outside the diamond. Field outside the diamond, please. Field outside the diamond. Referee Williams is uh, having some confrontation out there. I think it's about uh, because he could infringe anyone running on the line. An English the field fielder in the diamond, but uh, All right, a Welsh line, field, <coughs> a fielder may field inside the diamond, provided he doesn't cause any obstruction. It's been sorted out and. John Smith is ball into Hyam, who cuts the ball away, but it's fielded by Tuza. But Joe Hyam had got there, and without stopping, Tuza threw it to two. But the uh, English base runner, John Halliday, had already made ground. But the English players are thinking about this, they're not prepared to give anything away. Bobby Davin coming up the batting crease with England requiring 56 runs for victory. And Bobby Davin hits that beautifully, but it's well taken. Well, beautiful catch by Stuart Granger. He ran well, young Stephen, and took a brilliant catch only inches from the ground and uh, is uh, applauded by teammate Tony Parry. Good catch, young boy having a very splendid game for Wales and uh, could be here to stay for several years yet to add to his first cap. England, 23 for six. Required in 56 runs for victory with five men to get them. Alan Williams, left hander, facing John Smith. England must cool it. They must not fall for these high balls that John Smith is prepared to serve up to them. John Smith ball into Alan Williams, left hander. Alan Williams takes a bad ball. It's misfielded by the backstop, recovers. Out. And Alan Williams taking the bat with him to one base. I wonder why. Uh, is based out. Consoled by uh, John Smith. And oh, England are in real trouble. And are uh, letting the game slip definitely away from their grasp. 23 for seven. Still requiring 56 runs for victory to put their hands on the Gladstone Rose Bowl. <laughs> Harry Turner, captain of England, knowing a lot depends on the remaining batsman and himself. They need motivating, it can be done. And he faces John Smith. Ball close in two in into the diamond fielded by Leo and it's into it's a wonderful combination. These two players have struck a Bernard Lear on three base and Derek Tuza on one. They have not played together before, not even in the trial, and they've uh, made a happy relationship straight away. And that's another hat trick for John Smith, who's making a habit of it. John Smith, ball to Hyam. It's up in the air and it's beaten the Welsh field. And Tony Parry is chasing but he would need a, an entry bus to catch that one. Hyam's gone to three and he's going to four as the ball is thrown in. And it's a very good despairing four runs for Joey Hyam. Very popular player, Joey Hyam. Welsh bowler. Balls to Neil Rice. Out. And he's out. It was not a good delivery. He tried to pull it down the leg, mistimed it was struck on the body and is out and uh, England are in trouble 30 for 10 last man at the pegs Hyam Joey Hyam receiving perhaps the last ball of the 97 international match hits it just wide of the backstop he gets one run and it's returned in the diamond and he gets one run and England have been defeated once again by Wales by 31 runs. The ball has been placed in the diamond and the game is all over and Wales again have returned the Robert Gladstone ball with a very convincing display in the second period of the game. Right. Oh, yeah, John the Gladstone Rose Bowl has been presented to John Roberts, the Welsh captain, by another Welshman, John Crusher, the Liverpool football centre forward who hails from Cardiff himself. It's not 
It's not quite as big as the European Cup, but uh, it's still worth winning and well played to Wales. I'd like to take this opportunity personally of thanking everybody in Wales who wrote to me whilst I was in hospital. I'm sure they'll be pleased to know that uh, the foot's coming along quite well and within a week I hope to be back in training. I'd like to thank everybody here for coming along as well. It's been a tremendous game. Full marks to Wales. Um, there's nothing left for me to say now, but to thank everyone once again and from a sun-baked Aintree, we hand you back to the studio. Thank you. Well, he's not back to the studio just yet. Just a final word from me. The next baseball on BBC Wales will be the cup final played on the 6th of August from Roth Park in Cardiff. So until then, uh, from John Toshick and myself, it's goodbye from Liverpool. <laughs>